Hi, in today's video, I'm going to talk to you about two other new functions that have come as part of Microsoft Excel 365. The scan function and the reduce function. What do these functions do? Why do we need them? These two functions are important if you are working with dynamic arrays. In dynamic arrays, doing iterative calculation was always a big challenge and that's where this function is going to help us. Let me illustrate this to you with a couple of examples. So what I have with me is rate of return on an investment across all the months and I also have the month numbers here. Now what I want to find out is if somebody had invested let's say a sum of 100 at the beginning, how much would they be having at the end of each period? Now this is a very common problem working with rate of return or rate of change. Now the way we would have done in a typical Excel style where we are not using dynamic array where we would be working with normal Excel approach would be to first start with the first value, the base value, multiply it with 1 plus rate of return. Press enter, that's going to give you the value at the end of first period. Now, whatever we got at the end of first period is going to become the base of the next calculation. So D10 into 1 plus rate of return, the second rate of return. And the second value multiplied by 1 plus third rate of return and so on. This is how we would have performed the calculation. As you can see here, each iteration here depends on the previous iteration's value. This was done using traditional approach of in Excel, the legacy approach. If I were to do it with dynamic array, there is one big challenge. The reason is this entire setup here would be part of one single array. And how does an Excel refer to or rather an array refer to itself? You know, an array cannot refer to its own previous value. That's not possible. Or I should say it was not possible. So there were certain workarounds. Couple of years back I had done a video in which I had shown how to solve this with a product function uh, inside a table and then you create a growth index and then pull it into a dynamic array. The other alternative is to work with logarithms and sum apps. You could also use a matrix operation to solve it. But all these would have been pretty complicated. You know, you can't expect every user to handle this kind of a complex operation. And that's where scan function comes into picture. How does a scan function work and how is it going to help us here? Let me start that. So I'm going to open a formula with equal to sign equal scan. Let me open the bracket. So in a scan function, you have to first give the initial value. That's the first argument, which is going to be in our case 100, comma, then the array. So it works with one scalar value and one array value. The array here is the returns. So the first value is the scalar value, which is the initial value and then the rate of returns. Now, what do we do? I have to tell that to Excel and the way to tell that to Excel would be using a lambda function. So I'm going to type lambda a comma b. You could use a b, you could use x y, you could use any letters that doesn't matter. Now what does the a b do? See what we're going to do here is an iterative calculation, right? So a and b are the two parameters here. a is going to be the previous value of the iteration and b refers to the rate of return for the current period. So if it helps you, we are not going to use the column d in our calculation anywhere, but if it helps you, what you can do is Think of A to represent all the values from D10 to D24, right? So I'm going to say, you know, take the previous value of iteration, which is A in our case, and multiply it with one plus the rate of return, B. So as I told you, A represents the previous value of iteration. And what does B represent here? The second parameter, it refers to the current value of the array. So for the third value, in our case, it's going to be 3 point, the B is going to refer 3.5%. For the last value, B is going to refer 7.8. And this calculation, whatever calculation happens here, will be the value of A for the second iteration. So the way it's going to work is, for the first value, my initial value is 100, rate of written is minus 0.9. So 100 into 1, minus 0 0.9 is going to be 99.1 that 99.1 will be the value of a for the second calculation and for the second calculation b will be 4.1 so this is how it's going to work it's a little abstract 
but this is how it works once you're done what you can do is close the function so my lambda function is closed let me also close my scan function and you will see we've got the answer now why should i use scan function i mean what's wrong in doing it the traditional way again as i said you know if you're working with dynamic array we have a problem because in dynamic array my returns and the dates everything would automatically expand if something else changes let's do it in my raw data sheet i am going to add some more data because we initially had data till december 20 let me add these extra data points the moment i add these extra data points what you notice is my rate of return calculation now flows till january 22 but what i had done earlier with the scalar approach it did not flow it stopped at where we had stopped earlier december 20. scan function on the other hand what we achieved with scan function is automatically flowing the borders didn't happen because i did not apply formatting here formatting unless you do a conditional formatting doesn't automatically spread so that's what scan function does for us so it is essentially used to create iterative calculations and it's especially relevant or i should say only relevant in the context of dynamic arrays now having understood this let's go one more step and see one more application area so that we get a bit more conceptual clarity so i have the next example which is again a common financial modeling situation where we have a corkscrew model with us so what i have with me is a situation where i have cash flows and i have bank overdraft now what do i need to do so if you look at it uh, in this particular case i have my opening balance which is 500 if i had losses or cash outflows deficits here minus 400 where will the money come from i'll borrow from bank so my outstanding goes to 900 so next time i borrow two more hundreds so my outstanding is 1100 then when i have surplus cash flow i'm going to use that to repay but here is the thing the amount i repay will never exceed my outstanding amount so if you look at 2026 i have 360 outstanding but my surplus is 600 how much will i repay i'll only repay the outstanding amount which is 360 so i'm going to use a min function here minimum of opening balance or the cash flow whichever is lower so this is the calculation that i'm essentially going to apply everywhere and in this calculation if you look at it the result is iterative and uh, the repayment that i'm putting in let's say in 2026 depends on repayments of all prior here why because my repayment depends on opening balance and opening balance depends on the repayments in the past so if this had to be done using dynamic array how do we do it this was again a pretty complicated case because my repayment array cannot refer to itself same as the case with closing balance or opening balance and this is again a case where scan function can help us so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put equal scan initial value is 500 that's the starting value which is a scalar parameter and then a vector of cash flows here i've specified it see keep in mind if my cash flow is negative that means i'm going to borrow it right so what i need to do is my closing balance will be opening balance minus the cash flow because minus of minus becomes plus so if you have a deficit minus of minus would be plus so your closing balance of loan will go up so what i'm going to do is i'm going to specify excel what to do with the lambda function lambda a comma b the a represents previous value of iteration and b represents the current value from the array that we have given what we want a minus b opening balance minus cash flows if it's surplus my outstanding loan will come down but keep in mind my surplus can never be more than my opening balance or if that be i will not repay as much right so our closing balance can never go below zero that's what we know so i'm going to use a max function here and i'm going to say you know this value cannot go below zero if it goes below zero i want zero so zero or the number you're getting whichever is higher give me that so i'm closing the max function then i'm closing the lambda then i'm closing the scan function now if you look at it in this case i'm directly jumping to closing balance and that's what i would recommend 
So if you're going to build a dynamic array model and you want to create a corkscrew models, go for the closing balance directly, model dot. So I've got the closing balance. Now with the closing balance, how do I get the other two numbers, opening balance and amount borrowed? That's going to come from this. How do I refer to closing balance? It's the previous year's closing balance, right? So how do I pull out previous year's closing balance? I'm going to pull it like this. X lookup for current year minus one. Current year minus one should be the previous year. Look up for that in the years array and fetch me value from the closing balance array. Closing balance is J18 hash. I'm going to press enter. Now it's given me value for all the years other than first year. The reason is for the first year, 2022 minus one is 21. 21 is not there with me in the list. So what do we do? I know it's going to be the opening scenario where, I mean, for the first year is where you're not going to get the value. So in XLOOKUP, there's a fourth parameter which says, you know, what to give if data is not found. So if data is not found, I want to get the opening balance, which is 500. Give me that. So we've got opening balance as well. How do I get the amount borrowed? That's simply going to be closing balance array minus the opening balance array, enter, I've got the answer. So this is how you could use scan function for building a corkscrew model as well. So we learned how to use a scan function and its main role is to be able to develop or build uh, iterative calculations. Now let's go on and talk about what do we do with reduce function. So let me first explain you the reduce function here. What does the reduce function do? See, in a scan function, what we got was this. We got, if you add an initial amount, how much would be outstanding at the end of each period? We got that. A reduce function, on the other hand, does the entire iteration and just gives you the last value. So I'm going to give exactly what I gave earlier. I'm going to specify the initial value. And then I'm going to specify the returns array, comma, lambda, a comma b comma a times one plus b this is almost the same as what i did earlier with scan function the only difference is here it's not scan function what i'm using here is reduce function and let's see what data it gives me it gives me answer as 156 what is this 156 this is the final value if you go to the previous example that we did that 156 is the last value of the array that's exactly what the reduce function does for me here. Now, why would anyone need a reduce function? See, there are situations where what happens is your data has more dimensions and you cannot plot them. I'll give you a situation, you know, let's say a portfolio manager wants to do something where what they want to do is find out, let's say a six month rolling return. So if somebody had invested 100 rupees at some random date, how much they would have at the end of each of the six months. Now, how much I will have, I can get it using a product function. So if I want to find out anybody who had invested six months before January, how much they'll have. So that's going to be a hundred times product of one plus the previous six months. One, two, three, four, five, six. Why am I getting the last number directly? Because in the previous row, what I want is what would be the outstanding amount or what would be the portfolio value if somebody had invested six months before December 21. So this is exactly what I want to do, right? Scan function will not work. Scan function will give me starting till 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. Now that's not what I want. I want starting till 0 0.5, 0 0.1 till 0 0.6, 0 0.2 to 0 0.7 and so on. Now, I did this with product function, so that was good enough. So why do I need reduce? The problem is product function is not dynamic. It cannot produce a dynamic array. Uh, product function, some function, these are all aggregate functions. They don't spill. So here what we will have to do is we will have to work with reduce function and create a lambda. This lambda is a little complicated that I've already created. So where reduce function is used to create this, it's not so simple. But with the reduce function, I've got it. So let me just do the calculation here and show you what I'm going to do. So it's going to be equals moving val. That is the name of the function that I've created. So here I'm going to specify, you know, from which point onwards, from all these points onwards, right? I don't have 
any specific point for our, all these dates, get me a six months rolling return and find out what would be the value. And the returns are coming from my returns array. So this is going to give me a value for one unit. If I'd invested, let's say one rupee or one dollar, how much I'll have. If I want to know how much would be there if I'd invested 100, I'll just multiply this with 100 and I've got my answer. So this is where you can use reduce function. This lambda is a little complicated. Uh, if you can pick it up from the screenshot, great, do it. Otherwise, I will probably explain it on another occasion. So scan function and reduce function essentially tackles problem with iterative calculation. Have they solved all the problems? Is it now very easy for us to work with growth rates? Not really, because in corporate finance, we don't work with sequential growth rates. Often we work with year over year growth rates. So what I want here is, let us say, I want to forecast my amounts where I have quarterly sales already and each quarterly sales should be grown from the relevant year on year growth rate. So what I want is I want 550 times one plus first year growth rate. Let me zoom the screen maybe. And the second value multiplied by second growth rate, third value multiplied by the third growth rate and so on. So 700 or sorry rather, so 680 times one plus 15, 750 times one plus nine. I have these calculations and my 1Q23 is going to be four values before it's not sequential. So it's going to take four values before times one plus growth rate, right? Now this set of calculation cannot be handled with scan also or not that easily. It's you can, but that requires you to understand Lambda and mathematics a lot more. Uh, if you're interested in knowing all of them, we are actually very soon coming up with one training program on Lambda functions. It's going to be a self-paced training program. I am going to make the first thousand license of the program free. It's going to most likely come by around mid-March. I'll announce the plan. Maybe not thousand license free. I was a little over enthusiastic there. Maybe a hundred license free. I would be making it. And first thousand license will be given at very deep discount. So if you want to get the information very quickly, what I would suggest is, you know, subscribe to our website, perfectusacademy.com. Go there, scroll down the homepage. You will find the subscription form. Subscribe to our form. Also subscribe to the YouTube channel because the day I announce it, I will also be announcing it in YouTube through a video. So quickly, uh, you know, you will get the information and when you get it, you can try to be the, among the first thousand so that you get a really great deal for learning something so powerful. So I'll stop here for this video. I hope you learned something useful today. See you next time. Until then, take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.